That's how you make a chicken tractor in 30 minutes for 30 bucks. It'll hold, and it'll hold 25 meat birds. Welcome, modern steaders. I'm Al. And I'm Olivia. And we're from Lumda Acres. And today, we're going to show you how to make a chicken coop for $30 in 30 minutes. That's right. And we're going to be using store-bought materials. This isn't materials that we have kicking around the house saying, we built this chicken coop for $5. But we had $100 worth of supplies kicking around the homestead. No, this is $30 worth of stuff we just went to the store and bought. Let's show you what we got. Four deck spindles, two inches by two inches, 36 inches long. Directions, if you go on our website, we have the directions for that. I'll put a link in the video description below for that. And I'll put a link right here. You'll need 44 inch and a half long screws two duplex nails, 16 inch and a quarter long screws, 10 for 9 16 inch long wafer screws. You're gonna need around 200 staples. You can use fence staples like this that are half inch long. Or we're gonna be using a pneumatic stapler with half inch long quarter inch crown staples some glue, one roll of chicken wire that's 24 inches wide by 50 feet long, the star of the show, 12 72 inch long dog eared fence pickets. It's some sort of plastic container that you can cut up. You can cut two two inch by two inch strips out of them. We'll show you how we're going to be using these later. Set that aside for now. The first step we need to do is we're going to need to mark our four spindles at 30 and 3 eighths. If you want a chance to build this in 30 minutes, you're going to have to stack these all together and make one cut. We're going to bring them over to our chop saw and cut them, and then you want to make sure you save the remainder five and a half inch long piece. Now with your deck spindles cut, you're going to need to save these four for later on in the process, and we're going to stop with the 30 and 3 8 inch long spindles. We're gonna need two of our spindles and we're gonna space them out 72 inches apart. Take two of our fence pickets. Now, some of these are a little bit longer than 72 inches. If they are, cut them down to 72 inches long. If they're under 72 inches long, that's fine. Just make sure you space your deck spindles at 72 inches apart. All right, so you're gonna be in the way. If you want to move, let's go this way, move that spindle to the end of that picket. So like this, like this, and like this. This is what we need to do. Perfect. At this point, you're going to need your screw gun, eight screws that are inch and a half long. And we'll be using our glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right in our spindles. I'm going to flush up our ends. I'm going to have Olivia come over here and screw it in place. Slide. Yep, perfect. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do the same thing for the top. So again, we just need to flush up the top and the sides. Then we can do two screws. Go for it. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Alright, now we're going to repeat this process one more time. Alright. Let's get it all set up again. We need two more spindles. We need to space those out as long as the spindles are. One more. Perfect. Good job. Bang. If you have a pair of clamps handy, clamp one on the bottom of one spindle and that'll hold up your side for you when you go to do the next step. How many more screws are we going to need right now? Eight. Did you get them? Yeah. Perfect. I got one more project for you. So if you want to take the glue and put a little bit from here to there and then on the bottom do the same thing but stop here so the 
the glue doesn't run down and get all over the floor. Now you're going to take one of your fence pickets, line it up on the bottom, and you want you want your fence picket lined up with the outside of the spindle, not the outside of the other fence picket. Yep. Yep. Yep, perfect. So go ahead and You want to get your glue. This? Put a little bit of glue right here for now, it'll be good. Yep. Angle it right on the board. Perfect, that's good. it again. Flush. On top. And on the side. Go for it. Perfect. A little more. Yep. Perfect. Alright, ready for the last side? The last picket we need to put on. It's called a picket? It's a fence picket, yep. Now the reason we're just doing this top one and then going to the other side is it makes it easier. We don't have to hold on to the board. Now it's freestanding. So you do one screw here and then go to the other side. It's a lot easier. Okay, ready? Go for it. Now the base of the chicken coop is all built. The next step is wrapping the base with chicken wire. When you open your roll, you're going to notice that it has a piece of wire in it. Save this. We're going to use this later on in the project. And keep unwrapping the piece of wire that they use to roll up their roll. Right here. So set this aside. We're going to be using this. This is a nice piece of just regular chicken wire. I want to show you how to do that. Yeah. So you're going to pull this, and then push, and then you let go. Yeah. Whoa. You ready? Yeah. Get this laid out. Try that. We'll try again. Awesome. Oh, Hold on. Hard. It worked. You didn't think it was going to work? We're just going to keep going along, getting the top set in place, and staple it, and then we'll go back and we'll staple the top nice securely. And then we'll do the same thing for the bottom. This is a way that we can save some time. So I'm gonna come over here, Olivia. I'm gonna pull this tight and then have you do the same thing. Pull the trigger. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna pull this end and I'm making sure the top and the bottom overlap is even. I'm gonna pull it tight and I'll have you put it right there. Hold Go for it. Top and the bottom are even. We're gonna go right there. Okay, so hold on, we gotta make sure we're dead center of the wire. Go for it. Perfect. Go for it. Nice. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Let's go around and finish stapling up. Before we end the wire, we want to pull where we started tight. We want to staple it on this spindle. Now we want to bring the roll around front where we started and staple it back a few inches. We want to make sure we have a good overlap. And just you want to make sure you cut where the wire is braided together. Now we're going to take the wire, hold it tight, and we can wrap in and twist the pieces around and secure the fence to each other. Do 
you want to pull the bottom nice and tight. Get some good tension on it and then we'll staple it. Now we're just going to go back around and staple the top and the bottom in place. I'm going to flip this over, make it easier to staple the bottom. I find if you go every other spacing where the wires twisted is sufficient enough. Now for the next step, on the front to back, we want to grab on the outside of the fence picket. Let me show you. We're going to go on the outside of the fence picket and mark 36 inches. Ooh. You want to right here, number 36, mark it. Now we need to go to the other side and do the same exact thing, Olivia. Yeah, go ahead and mark it. Perfect. At this point, we're going to need the two cutoffs, the glue, the screw gun, and a set of clamps if you have it. And you're going to need two inch and a half long screws per side. We're going to put a little bit of glue on our spindle. We're going to, you want to keep the top of your spindle flush with the top and to one end of the line. Whatever end you want the front of your chicken tractor to be, that's the end you want this flush to. I'm just going to clamp it in place to hold it there while we screw it. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on this side now. Clamp on it. Next, we're going to put glue on these top pieces. Just going to flush it up with the end. We want to flush our end up here and here, and then we're going to screw it at two spots. Now we need to repeat the same step. Awesome. That part's done. Now we can start building the door. Woohoo! We need to take and cut one of our pickets down to make the door sides. We cut this picket in half, so we need to go 35 and 15 sixteenths. That'll give us the same on both ends once you subtract the saw blade thickness. Perfect. After you have your fence picket cut in half, you're going to need your screw gun and your inch and a quarter long screws. Bring those over. Before I stop building the door, I want to get my chicken wire cut to length that I'm going to need for the door. We're going to need three pieces 32 inches long. Once we have our three pieces cut, we're going to set them aside and start assembling the door. We're going to take our two pickets that are 72 inches long, lay them down first, watch your foot, and we're going to place them 35 in, 
35 and 5 eighths of an inch apart from each other. Gonna place our boards that we cut. We're gonna want to leave this back board 11, say three quarters of an inch, to make it easier on everybody. Three quarters of an inch from the very end. This will make it so when we go to open the door, it can open more than halfway. If we left it flush with the edge, the door would only want to go halfway and then it would bind. So if you skip this step, your door won't open all the way. I'm going to put in, make sure my edges are flushed up, I'm going to put in two screws lightly. I'm not going to sink them all the way. This will hold the board in place, but make it so we can slide our chicken wire underneath still. I'm going to do the same on the front. While you screw the front board in place, make sure it's still at your 35 and 5 eighths inch mark. That way you have plenty of room when you go and open the door. Flush up the edge. I'm just going to tack a screw in place. Take the wire that we cut and we can slide it underneath. Let's go do the same on the other side before we start tacking anything else down. Now we need to do the same thing on this side that we did on the other side. We're going to flush our edges up, but we want to leave three quarters of an inch from the back here on both sides. This will start two screws into the other board. And take our measurement. We want to make sure we're 35 and 5 eighths. Want to hand me a piece of chicken wire? Oh, gonna need that one after. You can slide this one in place as well. Get it started. Oop. Now we just need to staple the chicken wire in place. Perfect. Now we can take the wire that we have left over and weave it through here to close up the holes. That's what I thought you were going to use it for. You did, where the wire overlaps each other. We're going to take the piece of wire that we took out of the chicken wire when it was wrapped up, and we're going to use that to thread it closed. We're going to go over under. You gotta weave it, cut it long, weave it through the end, pull it back through and up, and bring it to an, in, under another wire, back up and around, and twist it. And that locks that in place. No animal could get up under there and get in. Perfect. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now we need to mark two feet. From one end, and then four feet. We're going to use our last two remaining five and a half inch long spindle pieces. 
if you want to put glue right here, you're going to line it up on the center of the mark. Keep it flush to the top of the picket. Put two screws in. We're going to need the glue so we can close it up. Now we need to mark 8 inches from the edge on both sides. This is where our hinge placement is going to be. This is where we use our plastic hinges. And we're going to attach them to the door. We're going to need our wafer style or pan head style screws to attach them. Now you're going to attach your hinges to your center support. Once you have your door on, make a third hinge and put it in the center. Once the door is securely on, we need to roll out and cut three pieces of chicken wire 36 inches long. Step on that. Measure 36 right here. We're going to cut two more. We'll be right back. We're going to take our three pieces of chicken wire. We cut to 36 inches long. We're going to run them from the center support back. We need to make sure we have enough to overlap and staple down there, and enough to fold over on the side and staple too. Ready? Make sure in the center of it. Good. Yep. Perfect. Now go every other. Yep. That was only half of them. Yep. We lied. You need four pieces of chicken wire 36 inches long, not three. And then once you have them on, just like we did on the door, you need to weave a piece of wire in between where they meet. It doesn't really show up that good. But if you weave the wire through, and then on every end, you just twist it around another piece of chicken wire. Nothing can get in there. Now we're almost done. You're gonna need your two duplex nails, a 3 16 drill bit, your drill. Now let's go over here. We're gonna go in the center of our front panel and drill with our 3 16 drill bit. And then I'll take a duplex nail. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side now. Nope. Okay, put the other one in, Olivia. That's your lock. Now we're going to take two of our pan head screws, one by each duplex. And the whole reason for the duplex is we can wrap the wire around the head of the nail, and that'll hold it in place. And that'll be our handle. We can cut. Right here. No, there you go. 
And now that makes it so we won't lose our nails. That's how you make a chicken tractor in 30 minutes for 30 bucks. It'll hold, and it'll hold 25 meat birds. That is awesome. There's a few upgrades you can do. You can put one inch chicken wire on it. You could use metal hinges and you could use a different latch system. But if you do it the way we did it, you're able to do it and purchase all this stuff at your local hardware store for around $30. We're going to be having a couple of upcoming videos of accessories. We'll be showing you how to add on a tarp for a roof. We're going to be showing you how to make an automatic chicken feeder and an automatic water that will go right inside the chicken coop that you don't even have to remove when you're going to move the chicken tractor. It's going to be awesome. And the other great thing about this design is when you open this up, turn over here. When you have your door open, you can get right in and you can give them food. You can give them water. You never have to get in the coop. You don't have to do any heavy lifting. It's all right here. If you put the water in, you can rest your water container right on the side of your chicken tractor. So this is the chicken tractor when it's all built. You have a door. You have plenty of room to get in and get to your animals. They have plenty of room to get around. You have a locking system on the front. Just close it, line your holes up, lock it in place. If you don't want to make your own automatic chicken feeder and automatic chicken water, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to go to Coops and more, and you can order all those products from them. And if you use the promo code LUMNA, you're going to get 10% off before shipping. Woohoo! Right? That's a pretty good deal, right? Yeah! We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had fun making it. Did you have fun making it? It was fun. Fun father-daughter project. I got to teach Olivia how to use a stapler. She's used nail beds before, but never a stapler, huh? That was the first time for you, and you did awesome. Boom. Oh, Pluto, you jealous? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share, it really helps the channel grow. If you just share the video and help us get it out there, we want as many people raising their own chickens in their backyard as they want to. And this is a great way to get into it. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at... Lama Acres, a guide, the modern home settings, all sufficiency and freedom. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I forgot. All right.